Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us the prophets and he sent us the prophets as human beings قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ Allah commands our Prophet to say, Indeed, I am a man just like you, except that I receive revelation. And so the Prophets are between these two realities of being a human being and the reality of prophethood. And by understanding the nature of prophethood, by understanding the uniqueness of the Prophets in their beliefs, in their wisdom, in their etiquette, we find what has made them be chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the revelation. Allah says, these are the ones whom God has guided, so in their guidance, follow. Stick true to their guidance. Stay to their example. And so by examining the characteristics of the prophets, we find the attributes and the attitudes that are necessary for them to attain superiority over mankind, for them to be the best of the creation. And there is a characteristic that we find in the Qur'an amongst the different prophets, one that is incredibly powerful, one that allows them to be the leaders amongst people, one that allows them to gain victory despite adversity. It is the characteristic, the attitude of being optimistic, of being hopeful. And it's something we can see throughout the life of our Prophet And it was present in times of peace and in times of war. When he was surrounded by supporters or by enemies. It was present when he was starving or thirsty It defined the character of our Prophet and something that he would impart to his companions to have hope, to have optimism, to have beautiful thoughts about your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and your Creator, to have a bright vision for the future. And this is an incredibly important lesson and maybe the most incredibly important lesson for our Ummah in these days. To always be hopeful, to always be optimistic, even when we are abandoned, even when we are dehumanized, even when the so-called leader of the free world dismisses the deaths of civilians in Gaza, even when our own Muslim leaders refuse to exert any pressure or leverage for the sake of the people of Gaza, even when we see the bombs are falling, even when we see the blood is shed, even when we see the children are killed, no matter how severe the adversity is, no matter how dire the situation becomes, no matter how aggressive the enemies are, no matter how much our community is tested with divisions and disunity, it's imperative for us to have a bright vision for the future. For us to be hopeful for what is going to come next. For us to have hope in our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Prophet Musa alayhi salam is fleeing his persecutor, fleeing his oppressor with a small group of slaves and they are running until they arrive and before them is the sea and behind them is the enemy and the people around Musa alayhi salam qala ashabu Musa inna lamudrakun the companions of Musa they said we're overcome this is the end where else are we going to go an enemy that wants to kill us behind us and the seed should drown us before us and Musa alayhi salam he doesn't know what's going to happen he doesn't know what's going to happen next but he is optimistic he is insistent that there's going to be a bright future ahead and he replies to them and he says qala kalla inna ma'i rabbi sayahdin he says no rather my lord is with me and he will guide me he's confident that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. He's confident that Allah protects the believers. 
He's confident that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the best ending. And he's confident that Allah does not abandon his servants. And after he says this, and he shows his hopefulness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal shows him the way out. وَأُوحِيْنَا إِلَىٰ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكِ الْبَحْرِ Allah inspired to Musa, strike the, with, strike the sea with your staff. And it parted, and it became like two mountains. This is the pinnacle of optimism. When the person has nothing in this world to rely upon. Nothing in this world is going to save you. And you rely upon your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that your Lord is going to protect you in your weakness and strengthen you when you are few. We see the example in Ya'qub alayhi salam when he loses his son Yusuf alayhi salam and he's told that his son is dead and his son is lost and all the sons around him are convinced there is no way that Yusuf can ever come back. And he says, Ya Abu Nayyid Habu, فَتَحَسَّسُ مِنْ يُوسُفُ أَخِي وَلَا تَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ He says, go and search for Yusuf and his brother. Go and look for him. وَلَا تَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ Do not despair from the relief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُ He says, nobody despairs from the relief of Allah except those who disbelieve. It is a sign of disbelieving in Allah Azza wa Jal that you are not hopeful for His mercy. It is a sign of disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you despair, that you give up, that you don't have any optimism and hope that something better can be there. So he says, go and look for them. Go and search them. Because no one despairs from the relief of Allah except that they are disbelieving people. And we see our Prophet ﷺ, he tries to teach this attitude to the companions in so many different circumstances. When he goes and he visits a man who is sick, an old man who is sick, and he tells him, لا بأس فهور إن شاء الله May there be no harm, and may it be a purity for you. May it be a purification. Meaning, a purification, we could understand it in your body that you're purified from the sin, purified from the sickness, or a spiritual purification, purified from your sins. The Prophet says, may you find purity, insha'Allah. And the old man turns to the Prophet wasallam, and he says, Tahoor, purity? بَلْ هِيَ حُمَا تَفُورُ عَلَى شَيْخٌ كَبِيرٌ تُزِيرُهُ الْكُبُورُ Rather, this is a bubbling fever on an old man, it will take him to the grave. The man has no optimism, for sure going to die. The fever is bubbling. This is an overcoming fever. It's not something light. عَلَى شَيْخٌ كَبِيرٌ I'm an old man. I can't withstand it. تُزِيرُهُ الْكُبُورُ It will for sure take him to the grave. And you know what our Prophet ﷺ said to him? فَنَعَمْ إِذَنْ then yes, in that case. If this is the way you think of the world, if this is the way you are insistent of thinking about the world, always in the negative, always that the worst thing is going to happen, always that we're going to lose, we're going to be overcome, if this is the way you think, then you're right. We know the power of our mind and our positive effect. So many studies on this reality, the placebo effect, that just thinking that you can overcome something might be the reason you overcome it. So the Prophet tells me, if you're insistent on being negative, then the negativity will win. But if you're insistent on being optimistic, then you're in the path of the Prophets. We see our Prophet وسلم, when he's in the cave with Abu Bakr and they see the feet of Quraysh walking around looking for them. And Abu Bakr is afraid. And the Prophet ﷺ tells him, what do you think about two, the third of them is Allah. Allah is with us, Allah will take care of us. Allah will protect us. In the most dire of circumstances, this is the optimism of Rasulullah ﷺ. We see the Prophet ﷺ and the believers in the battle of Al-Ahzab, when the Arabs bring the biggest army they've ever brought in order to exterminate all of the Muslims. بَلْ ظَنَنْتُمْ أَلَّيَّ يَنْقَلِبَ الرَّسُولُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِلَىٰ أَهْنِيهِمْ أَبَدًا 
You thought the disbelievers and the hypocrites, they thought the believers are never going back to their homes. The Prophet is never going to go back to their homes. Khalas, they're dead. This is the attitude of hypocrisy. We despair. We give up. In that same battle, the Prophet ﷺ, when he instructed the Muslims to build the trench, and they're digging a trench to keep this army at bay, and the Muslims come across a huge rock, and they can't break it. So they ask our Prophet ﷺ, we don't know what to do, there's a massive boulder here. We don't know how to break it to build the trench. So the Prophet ﷺ comes, and alone, after dozens of men tried to break it together, the Prophet comes alone, and he strikes it once, and he says, Allahu Akbar, utit mafatih al-sham. He says, Allahu Akbar, I have been given the keys to the kingdom in a sham And he strikes it, and it starts to break. And he says, Allahu Akbar, utit mafatih al-faris. Allahu Akbar, I've been given the keys to the kingdom of, kingdoms of Persia. And he strikes it and it breaks again. And he says, Allahu Akbar, utit mafatih al-Yaman. I have been given, Allahu Akbar, I've been given the keys to the kingdoms of Yemen. And he strikes it a third time and it breaks and it shatters. One of the miracles of our Prophet ﷺ. The hypocrites are watching our Prophet do this. And the hypocrites they start to mock our Prophet ﷺ. They start to insult him. They start to say, what is wrong with this man? We are surrounded by an enemy. We can't even go to the bathroom. To go to the bathroom, they would walk far away and go to the bathroom. You can't walk far away, the army is all around you. We're going to get hit by an arrow. We can't even go to the bathroom in peace. And this man is talking about the kingdoms of Persia, the kingdoms of Yemen, the kingdoms of Hisham. What is he talking about? This is the optimism of our Prophet And in the lifetime, in the lifetime of his companions, they got the keys to all of those kingdoms. This is the way the Prophet was and taught the believers even while they're under attack, even while the enemies are surrounding them. They're envisioning the victory of the future. We have to be the same. Even when we see the bombs are falling, even when we see the enemies are converging, they're all supporting the destruction, the genocide of the people of Gaza. Even when we see their money and their weapons are consolidated for this, we have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see that the victory is going to come. We see that the victory is going to be there. Usually, subhanAllah, when people think of a person who's optimistic, if I say think about someone who's cheerful and optimistic, you start to think somebody who's got an easy life. They're so happy and optimistic because their life is so easy, because everything is, is good for them. That's why they're like that. Me, my life is tough. That's why I can't be like them. But our Prophet wasallam, think about all the tests that he went through before he's even born. His father has died. He's born and shortly after his mother dies. And he is an orphan. And despite his nobility, there's no one even to teach him to read and write. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Three of his children pass away in infancy. And he buries all of his children except one before he dies. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we know when he is holding his son Ibrahim and crying over him to the point that the Sahaba didn't know how to understand the amount of grief the Prophet ﷺ felt for his son Ibrahim. He said, وَلَقَدْ أُخِفْتُ فِي اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَخَافُ أَحَدٍ وَلَقَدْ أُوذِيتُ فِي اللَّهِ مَا لَا يُؤْذَى أَحَدٍ He said, I feared for the sake of Allah what no one else feared. And I was harmed for the sake of Allah with what no one else was harmed with. And I spent three days and nights myself and Bilal, we didn't even eat a single bite of food. And yet he ﷺ, when the companions describe him, they said, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدْ أَكْثَرْ تَبَسُّمًا مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. I never saw anyone smile more than the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. He's still smiling. He's still optimistic. He still has a bright vision for the future صلى الله عليه وسلم. We see when Aisha رضي الله عنها, when she asked the Prophet, what was the worst day you saw? Was the worst day you saw the day of Uhud? When 70 of the companions were killed? When your best friend 
Hamza radiallahu an, who's the uncle of the Prophet, but subhanAllah, they're so close in age. They're maybe two years apart. And the Prophet is raised in the house of Abdul Muttalib. And Hamza is the son of Abdul Muttalib. It's like they're brothers. We say he's the uncle, which he is, but they're really like brothers. And Hamza is killed in Uhud. And Aisha asks the Prophet, is this the worst day you ever faced in your life? He says, no, there was a day worse. He said, the day when I went to a ta'if and I offered myself to the leaders of a ta'if and they did not respond in a way that I wanted. They in reality insulted the Prophet ﷺ. He said, and then I was driven out. They grabbed a mob of people to attack the Prophet with sticks and stones. And the Prophet ran for his life wasallam. He said, for, for, hundreds, for almost like 100 kilometers he ran. He said, until the angel Jibreel came to me and he asked me, Give us permission, and the angel of the mountains will collapse the mountains on the people of Ataif. And our Prophet ﷺ did not choose vengeance, did not choose his anger. He chose optimism. He chose hope. He said, no, maybe their children will worship Allah alone and will not associate in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah Azza to make us people who are optimistic, people who have a bright vision for the future and people who can see that the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to come. فَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لَكُمْ اسْتَغْفَرُوا إِنَّهُ غَفُورُ رَحِيمٌ بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا رب الشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي One of the aspects of our optimism is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the concept of martyrdom, the concept of there being a shaheed. When we think about all the people in Gaza, when we think about their children trapped under the rubble, when we think about the kids who are sobbing over the bodies of their parents, when we think of the fathers who are holding their daughters who have died in their arms and crying over them before they bury them. We have to remember these are shuhada, these are martyrs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتٍ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not say of those who have been killed in the way of Allah that they are dead, rather they are alive but you cannot perceive. Allah says in another verse, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ Do not think of those who have died or have been killed in the, sake, in the cause of Allah as being dead. Rather, they are alive and being provided for by Allah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said about this verse, the reason it was revealed to, to us. He said that when the companions died in Uhud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed their souls inside of the hearts of green birds. And these birds were flying in paradise. And they were eating from the fruits of the trees of paradise. And these souls began to speak to each other. And to say, who will inform our brothers about the beauty and the amazing things that we are experiencing? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, I will inform them about what it is you are in, what it is you are experiencing. So Allah revealed the verse, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ that, he's, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, do not consider that those who are killed for the sake of Allah, that they are dead, rather they are alive. And they are being provided for by their Lord. Fariheen, they are in joy over what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them from His bounty. وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ And they are giving glad tidings to the ones who are still going to join them. أَلَّا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ That there is no fear upon them, nor shall they grieve. It's enough to understand the beauty of being a shaheed by the fact that the Prophet ﷺ wished to be amongst them. 
Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَدِدْتُ أَنْ أُقْتَلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَأُقْتَلْ ثُمَّ أَحْيَا فَأُقْتَلْ ثُمَّ أَحْيَا He said, I wish that I were to be killed for the sake of Allah, then given life again, then to be killed, then to be given life again, then to be killed. And it's enough for us to know the beauty of being a martyr for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. That Allah raises them and mentions them alongside the prophets in paradise. وَمَن يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Those who obey Allah and His Messenger, they will be with those who have the blessings of Allah. Who are the people who have the blessings of Allah? مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ The Prophets. وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ Those who are truthful. وَالشُّهَدَاءَ Those who are, have shahada, those who are martyrs. وَالصَّالِحِينَ uh, And those who are righteous. وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا And what a beautiful companionship is that. What beautiful company is that? Why are they called shaheed? A witness in our faith. And the scholars have different opinions amongst them is that they bear witness to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the first moment that they are killed. From the first moment the Prophet ﷺ says, all their sins are forgiven and they see their place in paradise. They bear witness to the blessings of Allah from the first moment. Amongst it is that they, the angels will bear witness over their sacrifice. The, witness, the angels will say, this person gave their life and their blood for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And amongst it is because the scholars say that they will be witnesses on the day of judgment. The shaheed will be a witness on the day of judgment over the nations. They will be a witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, we were killed in the path of goodness. We, will ki we were killed standing up for the truth. We were killed for no good reason. They will be witnesses on the day of judgment over the people. And in fact, the beauty of this concept of being a shaheed, a witness, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says one of the reasons why there is hardship and difficulty at times is for Allah to take people and choose them to be a shaheed. These are the days we give you in turns. You have good days and you have bad days. And these bad days, the reason for them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make clear who is the believer and He will make clear and He will choose from amongst them who is going to be the shaheed. A man once came to our Prophet sallallahu or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once went to visit a man who was sick, a man who was ill. And the man complained to the Prophet. He said, I wish that I died as a shaheed. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Who are the shuhada? Who are the people? Who is the person who is a shaheed? They said, The one who fights and is killed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ said, Idan shuhada ummati qadeel. In that case, the shuhada of my ummah will be too few, they will be too limited. Then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned a number of categories of people who receive shahada. The one who is, suffers a plague is a shaheed. The one who dies because of a stomach illness is a shaheed. The woman who dies while she is pregnant is a shaheed. The person who dies because a building collapses over them is a shaheed. There are many shuhada. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take many from our ummah because the Prophet said, you are making it too few. If you say it's only those killed on the battlefield, then it's too few. There are many shuhada. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in another hadith, the one who was killed in protection of their property is a shaheed. The one who was killed in self-defense is a shaheed. And the one who was killed for their religion is a shaheed. And so when we think about our brothers and sisters in Gaza, because we are going to be people who are hopeful, because we are people who are optimistic, because we are people on the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we think with optimism. We remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of them. We remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give them the highest of rewards. We remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the first moment of their death going to allow them to see and to witness His pleasure and His blessings. And we remember that Allah Azza wa Jal gifts this ummah 
this concept of shahada in order to remind us to continue to strive, to continue to struggle, to continue to stand up for the truth, to remind ourselves we only are going to win. We only are going to have success. We only are going to have victory. Because either we win and the truth wins, or we die in the path of Allah, even if we die in our beds. We die in the path of Allah and we are granted shahada from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as we are fighting for the truth to succeed, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the people of Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them from all evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their dead to be shuhada. Ameen. Inna Allahu malaikatahu salluna ala nabiyya ayu alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina wa nabiyyana wa habibana Muhammad. 